Thank you. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm here to present uh, our recent work to develop a high-resolution PM models for uh, PM exposure model for China. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge our research team. Uh, primarily, the work, the coding work, was done by my student Zhong Wei Ma and my postdoc Xu Fei, who also we have a lot of uh, inputs from NASA and uh, external collaborators. Um, a, a, a brief introduction. For the past several decades, China has been suffering uh, more, uh, worse and worse air pollution, particularly for uh, fine particulate matter. Uh, it made a national and international news and uh, definitely attracts attention from the general public. Uh, PM measurements have been, uh, were extremely limited before 2013 because it was not included in, the, uh, uh, in China's national ambient air quality standard. But uh, there, there were significant events, haze events happening across uh, North China and the, uh, the, the East Coast industrial uh, and industrialized and populated regions. Uh, so by, uh, by the end of 2012, China established its first PM 2.5 measurement uh, ambient air quality standard, which is roughly twice the, the current U.S. standard. Okay? Uh, and starting January 1st, uh, 74 largest cities in China re began to report uh, real-time PM 2.5 measurements. So all the Chinese ground measurements are, uh, are from the TOM instruments or, or uh, beta attenuation measurements, unlike the filter-based uh, gravimetric measurements made in the U.S. So uh, this is just a, a photo uh, during a haze event. Uh, this is not fog. This is actually haze or very heavy particle pollution. People come out to exercise anyway. So it's, it's uh, they're forced to make the trade-off between uh, being heard by inhaling the PM and being, uh, getting the benefit of uh, exercising your cardiovascular system. Uh, it's not necessarily a, 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 a good thing to, to do. So the research objectives, um, first we want to develop a national scale PM model using uh, China's newly established ground monitoring network. Uh, and then we want to estimate uh, basically hindcast PM concentration for the past decade at 10 kilometer spatial resolution. And using that prediction data set, uh, we want to evaluate the spatial and temporal trend of PM in China. Okay. Uh, study period and input data, this is a satellite driven uh, multi-level multi uh, exposure model. The model year was set for 2013. This is the first year and the, com the first complete year of uh, a, a, a first complete year with ground measurements. Uh, validation periods, we collect um, as many independent data sets as possible, and also we use the first uh, six months of 2014 with uh, probably 800 to 1,000 sites with actual measurements for validation. Uh, ground measurements of PM 2.5 came from all the, the, the public sources, okay, uh, on the mainland in Hong Kong and in Taiwan. Altogether, uh, 1,100 sites by early 2014. AOD data is collected from the Aquamodis Collection 6 Level 2 data. We did a lot of uh, customized, customized treatment of the AOD to uh, improve coverage while reserving the highest quality possible. Uh, meteorological data comes from uh, NASA's GEOS FP simulation product. We also included NASA uh, Modi's fire uh, active fire information. Land use data is uh, from ESA's GLAP cover 2009 and, and several other years of the GLAP cover, GLAP cover data set. Okay. This is the distribution of the, of the 2013 ground monitors. You can see it's, it's very much population weighted, which can cause some problems in the model development process because we lack uh, rural and reference sites. Okay, uh, model structure, this is a two-stage hierarchical model. The first stage is a, uh, is a um, linear mixed effect model with random slopes for AOD temperature, wind speed, boundary layer height, and relative humidity. Uh, this, is, this, this stage covers all the temporal variability of PM, trying to capture that. And the second stage is built on the residual, model residuals from the first stage. This is a generalized attitude model with uh, spatial, spatially varying terms only. Uh, such as the, the uh, calculated forest cover and urban cover data. And then we did the standard uh, tenfold cro cross validation for model performance evaluation. So here is, let's see, works, okay. Um, 
model fitting, cross validation. Okay, you can see the uh, R score is pretty high, at around 0.8. Uh, we have a, a low bias, so uh, as seen by the slope that's below one. Okay, um, we compared the, the the first stage only in the overall model performance, and uh, they don't vary that much. Meaning the second stage does not contribute a lot to the uh, variability uh, of predicted PM 2.5. And I'll, I will explain why, uh, why we need the second stage. Okay. So uh, some general overall model statistic, uh, performance statistics, statistics uh, the room mean square prediction error is around 27. Overall uh, relative error daily predictions for 2013 is around 35%. This is approaching the uh, performance of models built in the US. Okay. Primary reasons for model error, first of all, is the coarse grid size. We're comparing a 10 by 10 grid cell with points in it. Okay. Always we have this uh, spatial misalignment issue when you compare an a, 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 a aerial measure with a point. Okay. Bias distribution of ground monitors, like I said, most of the monitors represent urban high pollution levels. We lack the uh, dynamic range to, to show the spatial contrast to some extent. It's getting better and better as more uh, monitors come online to represent uh, second tier or third tier cities or even the rural areas. Unaccounted sources such as we don't, at this spatial resolution, we don't have ways to account for traffic emissions. And actually, uh, it's almost impossible to get uh, road network data from China. It's extremely hard where you have to pay a lot of money uh, to get a, 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 a distorted uh, data set. Also, change in PM vertical profile is not accounted in this case. This can be fixed by introducing a model simulated uh, vertical profile of PM such as those from uh, models like GoCard or GeoScam. Contribution of stage two, uh, the reason that we don't see a big jump in R square is primarily because stage two correction took place in areas without monitors, right? So it's an unfair evaluation or an unfair statement to say stage two does not make any contrib contributions. If you compare the stage two predictions and the full model predictions, you will see the second stage GAM model uh, reduced or de removed a lot of the unrealistically high PM estimates in Tibet and in the uh, source regions in the Gobi Desert. Okay. So the full model moves the overall predict predicted uh, PM concentration surface closer to the uh, ground observations. And with that, we can get a seasonal estimates because the, the, the model is uh, predicting at the daily level. And this basically agrees with our common sense that in winter, China suffers the most severe pollution, and we see more and more pollution episodes in, in the fall as well, such as you know, right after the APAC meeting. Uh, OK, uh, this is the most interesting part, that we did a validation of hind casting results using data that's never been included in the model development process. So data from 2004 to 2012, and uh, the first half of 2014, you can see uh, daily predictions are not that great, R squared is 0.4, but if we aggregate to monthly and seasonal level, we get very exciting results. Basically, our model predictions aggregated to the monthly and seasonal level provide unbiased and highly accurate estimates of historical PM concentrations in China. Okay. And this poor, relatively poor daily prediction is caused by uh, assumpt a very rigid assumptions model structure for the first stage of our modeling system because we're assuming the day-to-day -day variation in 2013 applies to previous years. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough data to make any adjustment to this model structure because it, it, it does require a lot of information to basically fit the temporal variability of or overall temporal variability of a PM from 2004 to 2012. We can rely on the, uh, the US embassy data for a bit, but uh, um, we, we haven't tried to make any further model adjustments. This is straight from the 2013 model. Okay? And the, the results are very promising. Okay, from that, uh, we did some trend analysis for China. 
uh, for the China, uh, China uh, as a whole, and also a few uh, very interesting uh, and highly industrialized regions. For example, the uh, Beijing Tianjin area, the Yangtze River Delta, and the Pearl River Delta. Uh, what we found is that um, there seems to be a tipping point right around 2008. Before that, the overall PM concentrations in China kept increasing at a pretty rapid speed. Uh, this is like uh, roughly at annual level two micrograms per cubic meter per year increase. After 2008, we've seen a steady decline of PM concentrations at a slower pace though, roughly half microgram per cubic meter per year. Okay? But this trend is not spatially uniform at all. Uh, this is the Beijing Tianjin area, a rapid increase until 2008 and pretty much leveled off. Afterwards, uh, the reduction trend is not statistically significant. So basically, it, there's constant PM levels. Uh, for the Yangtze River Delta, there is no trend. There's no statistically significant trend. Pollution level in this PM pollution level in this area is pretty much constant okay, across the years. Um, the Pearl River Delta did the, uh, the best job. You know, there's a, a statistically significant and pretty sizable trend of PM reduction after 2008, we see that's a 1.5 microgram per cubic meter reduction per year in the, uh, in the Del uh, Pearl River Delta. So in conclusion, um, I'm very pleased to see that our model can provide very reliable historical PM concentrations estimates at monthly and seasonal level in China. Uh, at 10 kilometer spatial re resolution, this resolution is compatible or has been used in studies conducted in the US and Canada. So this is already reaching a sort of a usable, usable spatial uh, grid size. Okay? Although we can, we can do better. We can probably increase that by, let's say, 10 to 100 fold. But the problem is, um, what do we do about them? Right? Uh, and from that, we can see the PM levels in China does not have a linear trend. It does vary uh, in time and in space, okay? So overall for China, we see a increase of roughly two micrograms per cubic meter between 2004 and 2007 nationwide, and a decrease of half, roughly half a microgram per cubic meter between 2008 and 2013 with uh, substantial spatial variability. And that's all I have to say, thanks. Do well, I have time for questions? Yes, please. Right. In your state one regression, could you comment on the relative importance of the satellite DOD and the meteorological and DL height parameters? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Uh, as you, you would imagine, they are somewhere correlated. They're predicting power overlap a bit. So we did uh, analyze uh, a subset or, or, or reduced model format for stage one. If, we draw, if I drop all the land use meteorology, I think R squared dropped by 0.2 or something. So a AOD only model would give you a R squared of 0.6. Yeah, some, something like that. And uh, I have to say if we have better uh, auxiliary parameters, we can, probably do, we, we can probably do a lot better job in the prediction process. Uh, not yet. Uh, we are working to get some uh, emissions data from China. So currently, it has is, it is not been included in the model. But that's definitely on the plan. Thanks. Any other questions? OK. Uh, can you comment on the source of the trend from China? That's another very good question. Um, I don't have a definitive answer to that. Because we thought about uh, the Olympic Games during 2008, but that doesn't seem to be the case. That can drive the entire uh, nation to have a decreasing trend. It has to be with uh, implementation of some of the emission control policies that uh, kicked in, that, that was initiated in 2005 and then sort of fully implemented after 2007. 
uh, to, for example, to drive down the power, em uh, power plant emissions and uh, the improvement of fuel standards and things of that sort. 